So, Paul, uh, you just won the Best Visual Effects Oscar last year for Blade Runner 2049, and you're nominated uh, the second go-round for First Man. Um, you know, creating something, uh, recreating, I should say, something that is, you know, a fact, as opposed to creating visual effects that are more fantastical, more imaginative, I guess. Um, what are some of the challenges inherent in you know, a film like this where you have to recreate something like the moon landing or, or various Apollo mission launches? Well, you know, um, when I did Blade Runner, it was very much uh, like science fiction. And this one is very much science fact. And Damien, Damien wasn't really interested in trying to reimagine uh, like, like the actual camera moves or like the, the overall look. You know, people, people were uh, already used to like, seeing footage from the uh, 60s of the uh, Gemini missions, of the Apollo missions. So, so basically what he wanted to do was to, to like try and recreate that imagery, but like obviously update them because like everything you saw was like very, very, uh, very degraded or flickery and that kind of thing. So, so like the idea was to like try and come up with a uh, philosophy in that um, we would we would use different techniques to like try and get the most believable image possible, and you know that actually ranged from from um, from like using uh, full size craft to using archival footage to using miniatures and to using all CG. So like basically we used the entire gamut to actually try and try and create a very believable movie. And this was indeed Damien Chazelle's first real endeavor into, you know, heavy visual effects in a somewhat major way. Uh, so when you were working with him, did you sense any uncertainty on his part on how to approach things? Or did you feel that he was super confident from the get go about his approach to the visual effects? Uh, see, we actually spent a lot of time talking like a, as soon as I finished Blade Runner, like a, I joined the show and we spent about three and a half months actually in Atlanta doing prep and like we like we would have constant meetings every day with like uh jd with uh who was the special effects uh supervisor with nathan crowley who was the uh art director and with limits who was the dop and like we we basically brainstormed as to as to how we were going to make uh this movie and you know damien was very 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 adamant that like he didn't want the visual effects to like take you out of the movie like you know he wasn't really interested in doing any blue screen or green screen you know like he always wanted to find a set you know like he always wanted to to like ground all the photography in something real and what that meant was that like you know like for example um even though even though this particular scene didn't make it to the movie because like uh, otherwise the like film would have been three hours long like the the uh, the production actually bought a a uh, plot of land, built the Armstrong house, played out the entire scene, and then burnt it down. So like like we did actually, we did actually have a scene where like we burnt the burnt the uh, burnt the inter the the entire thing down. So that just shows the the kind of level the the uh, like trying to keep everything uh, very very realistic and practical. And so like we spent. We spent days upon days upon days, like trying to work out. Okay, so if we have a shot which is um, where, like, we're outside the craft, i.e., like we're craft mounted, we will try to use the um, the full scale um, uh, full scale build of, say, the LEM or the Gemini, because that would give us the most realistic uh, uh, realistic look. And myself and Linus had done various tests. In uh, in Atlanta and LA, of uh, trying to put computer generated imagery onto an LED screen and shooting that with uh, the uh, production film cameras, because this was this was going to be a film shot on sixteen millimeter and thirty five millimeter and also IMAX, and uh, and and so like we did various testing of like trying to okay how are we going to implement CG in this movie and we produced a lot of computer graphics for this movie except that we. What we did, rather than trying to add it all in post, we actually turned things on its head, and we we spent a lot of time in pre-production and and during the shoot actually creating computer-generated imagery to go on this screen. So like we kind of turned things around. Like we spent all of our post-shot money prior 
to like produce the content on the screen. And what that gave us was, was like, because that screen was being shot through the film camera, that those computer graphics were going through the film camera. It was going through the optics of the film camera. So, so like you instantly got like a film patina. You got an overall filmic look to the dailies without having to then do composites. Yes, there were, there were, there were definitely some technical issues in which like we had to update. Uh, certain backgrounds because of resolution or like we would see the gimbal in there or there would be a stray light you know that kind of update rather than like completely changing the background and 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 specifically not doing it green screen or blue screen because one thing which you do gain from having the actual content is that you get all the interactive light you get all the reflections you can't get that from a green screen you get green spill which you then remove and put on the background and you know there's a very simple uh, philosophy behind a, behind a green screen. If you shoot a green screen like at a certain intensity behind you, and you change that background, and and that background is brighter or darker, you're always going to have an issue trying to make that image believable because like you've just changed the fundamental um, nature of the edges and the background behind you. Whereas if you've got the content which you're doing already, which is going to be the actual background, well then you'd have you don't have any of that, and and like instantly on. On your dailies, you have something far more, far more believable. And plus, you get reflections in the eyes, and you get reflections in the visors, and like you get reflections on dials inside the cabin, which, which traditionally you wouldn't actually turn that over for like a visual effect shot, just because there like wouldn't be the budget to do the entire sequence. So you know, it was a, it did turn things upside down. We weren't really expecting to have. Uh, rendered that that much imagery, but we actually ended up rendering 90 minutes worth of content for that LED screen. Wow. Um, you know, all that you're talking about right now, it, it really goes along with the general aesthetic of the movie, which is this sort of gritty documentary naturalism. Um, I mean, how much did that affect your work? Yeah, so like usually in my world, like, you don't want to chat. You don't want to be shaking the camera. You don't want to be zooming, <laughs> zooming everything. Like, it does make tracking difficult. But you know, this wasn't a very big budget movie, and like we didn't really have time to like stop for like a visual effects setup and like okay, like we need to do this in a particular way. So uh, you know, techniques techniques nowadays are at such a point where like even if your camera is running around and you are zooming and and like yeah, and like you are dealing with like film shutters. Yes, things take a little bit longer to to actually what we term track uh, track these elements, but like it can be done. And the fact that you're doing the shaking in the camera, like basically when the uh, when when uh, Ryan and the other astronauts are actually in the capsules or like the X or the X fifteen, we're actually shaking the entire whether it's the X fifteen or or the or the uh, or the um, like we're actually shaking the gimbal so they they would spend the entire day being shook and what that gives you rather than doing that in post i i you know taking like a a, a flat image and then shaking it no you get everybody inside shaking and there's also a very filmic thing with uh camera shake that like when it's on on film it gives it a very particular look and if you if you're able to capture that in camera it's a, it's way better than like actually trying to trying to reproduce that in post so you know and it's it's just those little things in which like which like and it's very odd to say traditionally because like, because like you know traditionally you would do the uh, post uh, the, you would do the shake in post or you would take all the visors off and like you would then add a digital version on that but no we specifically try to do things in an in in a different way, in, in that we kept all the visors because we were getting all all of these reflections. Yes, every now and then we would get a reflection of the cameraman in the visor, but like we then took that on board and cleaned it up and took him out and pasted it over, rather than doing a full on um, a, a like a full on uh, publication of what the reflection was would have been, because like all the textural detail in the glass and in the and in the uh, and the visor is sometimes it's lost when you try to when you try to recreate it. It's it's good, but you never really truly get back to what you had originally. Um, and looking back over your career, you've gone back and forth between heavy sci-fi fantasy films like you know Harry Potter series, Tron Legacy, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, of course, and those are definitely more uh, you know 
very fantastical. And now this first man, gone girl, very much more realistic, real world grounded things. Um, and so I just wanted to know if there were specific challenges when it comes to creating effects for these kinds of realistic films that you don't necessarily find with some of the sci-fi projects you've worked on. You know, like the goal is always trying to make things believable. You know, it's a little bit harder when like you've got flying spaceships and things going on. But you know, like the goal is to is is always to like try and try and do the work in a way in which the viewer believes what they're seeing. So that like it doesn't take you out of the movie. You know, and and like, you know, for certain genres that that's actually really difficult to do because like, you know, if you've got a mo if you've got a creature or something, like it, you've got to You've actually got, and you've actually got to hit it in in a certain way so that like it doesn't it doesn't take you out of the movie and like there are there are like fantastic techniques now to actually get like facial performances and that kind of thing and and then like you know and you know I worked on um, the uh, curious case of Benjamin Button but curious case case of Benjamin Button back in two thousand eight and that was you know to, to this day that was actually pretty groundbreaking. Break in, in like the actual facial captures and like the actual way in which we did that because some of those techniques are actually still still uh, still still valid today. So you know, and for me, and I think I think I think for like every visual visual uh, visual effects person is always to try and make something believable so that like the audience doesn't doesn't suddenly. Uh, is, is is like taken out of the, the movie and Damien was very 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 adamant about this with with like all of our effects and when I pitched him the the uh, the uh, use of archival he was he was again he was he, he, he was very firm in that at no point can uh, the audience believe that like we are using ar archival footage because it will just take them out so you know it's it, he added an additional pressure but like it was something which like you always try and try and strive for whether like you get that always get that time or not is 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 a different thing but you try um you know we mentioned your oscar win for blade runner um i had two questions about that uh, sort of pertaining to it <laughs> um number one uh, what did that recognition mean for you and and for everybody else on your team uh but also um you know you're reuniting with denny villeneuve for dune um i'm sure that you're you have to be incredibly tight-lipped and sworn to secrecy, just like on Blade Runner twenty forty nine. But can you give us a, an idea of you know how that's going? I, I yes, I can't really talk about June. <laughs> I figured, but you know you got to ask. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't really talk about it. Otherwise, I'll probably not be on it anymore. But uh, <laughs> working, you know, working with Denise during. during uh, it was it was uh, such a fantastic experience. Yeah, you know, like working with these visionary directors, like you know, like uh, like uh, Denis and 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 uh, Damien have got have, are like, uh, have have the entire movie in their heads. And you know, when you talk to them about 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 like certain things which you're working on, and you like you know like realize okay this is why you're the director because like basically you see all the aspects of it it's 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 it's, it's truly inspiring well before i let you go let me just ask you one more thing uh you know pertaining to that when you see this film put together um you know in imax and all of that stuff i mean um you know what did you think the first time when you saw it completed I, mean, uh, I love this movie. You know, I, I like uh, when we were when we were just finishing the movie out in the, uh, the out, out in the desert in California for the end of the X fifteen sequence. Damien had been uh, Damien and Tom uh, Tom Cross, the editor, had been putting together like a montage of uh, of like uh, all the sequences in which we had made, and um, and like uh, towards 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 the end of the movie, like uh, things were. Things were very tiring, and that like we were all working very hard, like six, seven days a week, you know, and finishing finishing quite late. And basically, when we wrapped Ryan, we, uh, they brought out like this uh, this uh, big TV screen and played back played back this this uh, this uh, montage, and it was truly moving. Like because you could see that like okay, you had created you had created something special, and. Uh, when I saw it for the first time in IMAX, and 
and like you're going through all the different stages of of like uh, of like those those uh, those uh, years for uh, for for Neil, and then like you know you're going through this documentary style, shaking camera, zooming in, zooming out, and then like you come out into space, and like you come out onto the moon and the frame opens up and and it's such a different feeling and, I, and the music as well you know every aspect of this movie i love you know i, I was it was it was uh, truly 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 a fantastic experience and it was a it, it was a quick turnaround like you know i i actually started the end of blade runner which was uh, well, i guess uh, august uh, end of august something like that and and then like you know i was on it for like another uh, I guess year and a half before it came out. So, so you know, it, it was a quick turnaround. It was a fast, highly, uh, you know, a lot of pressure, but it was a fantastic experience. Absolutely fantastic. Well, it's a great movie, uh, Paul. Thank you so much. I know it's late in Budapest where you are right now, so uh, thank <laughs> you so much for <laughs> making some time out of your busy work uh, and um, you know to talk with us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for thank having you. me. Thank yeah. you.